Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. Now, in this lesson, we're going to do something a little bit different to what we have been doing previously within the dynamic weather scripts. So I'm just going to downsize Mono Develop for now and explain what we're going to do. When we come to setting up the scene, obviously we'll have a player game object and we'll have a weather game object that we'll create here and we'll have all the particle systems for the weather attached to the game object now as I'm sure you're all aware if we to, was to make that game object very large covering the entire scene it's very taxing on the game engine and it would mean that only people with very high powered PCs would be able to actually play the game so what we're going to have is a smaller area where you can actually see the weather and it's going to follow the player game object overhead so we'll come back to mono develop so that's what we're going to do in this lesson so we'll come right at the very top and we'll say private transform with the capital T and I'll just change that back and we want to reference to the player so we'll just name this underscore player we'll close the line off and into the comments so we'll say player game object transform and the same thing again private transform and then we want the game object we're going to assign all the particle systems to and we'll just call this underscore weather and we'll close the line off and into the comments so we'll say weather game object transform now because we don't want the transform to be exactly the same otherwise the web game object to be right down here via the player we want it overhead we need a third variable and we can make this one public because you may need to adjust it for your project and it's going to be of type float and we'll say underscore weather height and let's make this equal to 15f and we'll close the line off and as always straight into the comments so we'll say defines height from ground of weather game object and we'll just save that there now with those three variables in place let's come down to the void start function and I'll come right to the top here and what we want is game object with the capitals and we need to give this a name so we'll say underscore player game object and we'll make this equal to game object with the capitals dot and we want to say find game object with tag and make sure it's the singular not the plural and then we'll open and close brackets we'll close the line off and come inside the brackets and we'll put little quotations and we'll say player so what this is going to do once we drag a character into our scene so let's just drag the fps controller and we'll get rid of the main camera that was already there we'll tag this as player so we're telling the script to find game object with the tag of player this one here and we're giving that game object a naming convention of underscore player game object so we'll put this into the comments we'll say find 
player game object. And we'll enter there. And then we'll say underscore player is going to be equal to the player game object dot transform. And we'll close the line off and straight into the comments. So we'll say caches players position. And we'll just save that off there. So here's our variables. So we're saying find the game object with tag of player, give it this naming convention, and then this variable here is going to be equal, this variable of transform is going to be equal to this game object's transform. So we know the position and we'll make sure it's saved off here and we'll pick this up in part two. So I hope to see you then and until next time, bye for now.